study with her. So, uh, you know, and I, I guess I consider myself a Jamaican. I wasn't born in Jamaica. Uh, Stephen's also a Jamaican. He was born in Jamaica, but he came here. Uh, I wasn't born in Jamaica, but I got there as soon as I could. So we're, uh, we're really pleased that you all are going to be calling uh, Lord willing Stephen uh, to the ministry here. Let's turn in the Word of God to uh, Romans chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading this morning out of, uh, out of the NIV, uh, Romans chapter 1, beginning with verse 1 and going through verse 23. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and for his namesake we receive grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all who are at Rome, who are loved by God and called to be saints. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart, is preaching the God with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times and I pray that now at last by God's will the way may be open for me to come to you at room I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong that is that you and I may be mutually encouraged by one another's faith I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I had planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among other Gentiles. I am obligated to both the Greeks and the non-Greeks, both to the wise and to the foolish. That is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also you, to you who are Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, first to the Gentile and then to the Jews. I said that wrong. First to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. I'm sure Russell would correct me very quickly afterwards. For in the gospel is a righteousness from God that is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Now, here's part that we don't like to hear in church. We don't like to even think about this. Verse 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal nature, have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him nor gave thanks to him, but in their thinking they became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man birds and animals and reptiles. If you have your little uh, announcement, uh, daily, you know, the bulletin, is that what you call those things here? Bulletin, you'll notice there's a place where you can fill in the blanks. The, uh, the sermon this morning, we're going to have five points. Nancy's going to come in just a minute, but uh, just so you can begin to fill in, there are going to be five points, no poem, but five points. The uh, five points are, you can use the acrostic power, the word power. The sermon is entitled, Power for the Powerless, uh, and the, uh, the five points are these. Promise power, obligation to obey, wrath against wickedness, eager to evangelize, and fifth, 
righteous response. Nancy, would you come and share with us? Good morning. Can you, do I have to hold this? Okay. Wait a minute. Is that okay? Okay. Um, my name is Nancy, and I'm a grateful, recovering codependent. Psalm 66, 16 says, Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. Early in my marriage, I became a Christian. I wanted everyone else to know and love God as well. Unknowingly, I became obsessed with my husband not knowing Christ. My identity, value, and well-being came from being a wife and mother. Apart from those roles, I did not know who I was as a person. I knew more about what others liked than about what I liked. I loved serving God through helping others, but I became more focused on the lives of others than on my own life. I became hypervigilant about what others were or were not doing. I was basically trying to play God in their lives to be in control. I gave advice when it wasn't asked for. I thought I could actually talk others into making changes in their lives. I had not accepted the truth that I am the only person I can change. I struggle with perfectionism in myself. My fears and insecurities about making a mistake kept me from growing and truly experiencing life as God intends. Rules made me feel secure because then I didn't have to take responsibility for making choices. If you were to ask me if I lied, I would have said no. True, I did not lie to others, but I lied to myself. I suppressed the truth about myself, as we just read about in the scriptures. I was prideful and arrogant, but I did not understand the basis for it until I began coming to Alive again. At this point, I have to tell you what a step of faith it was for me to go to Alive again. I grew up at the dinner table with Walter Cronkite, and whenever the conversation would get a little bit too loud, we were hushed so my dad could hear Walter Cronkite. And my dad was a good man, and he loved me. But I've learned that I've had a difficult time talking for any length of time about myself. I could carry on a conversation with others, but to focus on myself was not something I could do. So I began going to Alive again, and slowly I began to understand that I am powerless over people, places, and things. I am as powerless standing here before you as I will be on my deathbed. I had an illusion of control because I am healthy and able to be independent. I have finally recognized that all I am, have, and will be is only because God has poured out his grace on me. I realized I had focused on others in order to avoid facing myself honestly who I really was and the pain I was in. John 8:32 says, if you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. To me, this means knowing Jesus personally through his word. I now believe that it also means admitting to God, to myself and to another human being, the exact nature of my wrongs, the truth about my childhood, my pain and my fears. My past is losing its power over me. I began to see that I had not been living a life of faith, but a life of fear. Today, I'm so grateful for all of my life experiences because through them, I am learning to turn my will and my life over to the care of God each day, rather than trying to control what happens and then worrying about it, which is the opposite of faith. I like John 6, 6 because it reminds me that Jesus